What's going on guys, Sam here, and in today's video I'm going to show you how I got this Blade Runner water caustic effect using two different methods. The first method is going to be the standard, harder way of doing things, and the second is going to be a much simpler way. And trust me, it's way easier and a lot more fun. So let's get into it. Now in the description of this video, you're going to find a link to download a few gobo textures or these textures that you're seeing on the lights right here. So that's going to allow you to get started and try out some of these textures on your light. So it's fairly easy to apply a texture to a light using the light function material in Unreal Engine. But when you're using video, it gets a little bit more complicated. So I'm gonna show you that process right now. All right, so what we need to do to be able to actually create these is we need an image media source or a file media source to actually bring in the media into Unreal Engine. And then we need a media player to play back that media. And then finally, we need a video texture asset, which is the texture that is going to be used in the material instance that is going to be applied to the light. So I know that sounds a little complicated because it is a little bit complicated. So to get started, we can right click here and we're going to do a file media source. All right, so we'll just right click and search for file media source. And we're gonna call this FMS for file media source and we'll call it underscore caustics. We need to use this file media source to tell Unreal Engine that we're pulling in a media file from our hard drive. And we're gonna double click on that. So here we have our file path. And this is where we're gonna choose where the video file is located on our computer. So we're just gonna click these three dots. So we have water caustics, we have looping and non-looping. And then we also have our miscellaneous assets like curtains and leaves and plants and things like that to create these motion gobos for your lights. In my case, I'm going to use these water caustics. So I'm going to use a loop and we're just going to use this calm loop 03 right here. And these are real video textures that we shot on a real camera. And so they're gonna be really high quality. And actually I'm gonna use this calm loop slow. We shot many of them in slow motion. So if you're using them on a large scale, you're gonna probably wanna use one of these slow motion assets. Those are available with Lightforge 2.0. So just be aware of that. We can pre-cache the file. So that is going to load it into memory and play it from there. And generally we're gonna to wanna to do that. So we're just gonna click on save and we can get out of that. So you can see there we have our file media source. The next thing that we need to do is actually create a media player. So we're gonna click on media player right there and we're gonna check this box that says video output media texture asset. That's going to create that media texture that's going to actually be the texture that we use in our material that we create for this light. So I'm gonna click okay. I'm gonna call this MP underscore caustics. You're gonna see that's gonna create our media player and our media texture. First, we're gonna open up that media player. You're just gonna choose the file media source that you loaded in here. So we're gonna double click on that and you can see that it's now playing back that media asset. What we can do is also save our media playlist. So I'm gonna click on save this playlist and I'm gonna to navigate to my tutorial gobos right here. And we're gonna just save this as MPL for media playlist caustics. So that's going to actually stay saved in the media player hopefully. Sometimes it can be a little bit buggy and that's going to make sure that this continues to play and loop in the editor. So we're also going to click on loop and we're going to make sure that we have play on open set and then we're going to click on save. So that should loop this media texture in the editor. Now we actually have this media texture. So if we double click on the media texture, with the media texture this is what we're going to actually apply in our Unreal Engine material. Make sure that your media player right here in the details panel of your media texture is set to the media player that you created. So that's gonna be this one right here, MP underscore caustics. Make sure that's set up. When you check that little box that says video media texture output or whatever, when we created the media player, it's going to automatically link those. But if for some reason it's not playing or you're not getting any file loading in here, that could be the cause. So just make sure you check that. We now have almost everything set up, but if we look at our a spotlight that we have in our scene, for example, so let's just add a spotlight. I'm gonna get rid of my current lighting. All right, so we have nothing in here. I'm gonna grab a spotlight and just drag it into my scene. I'm gonna hit G on the keyboard to make sure we reveal everything in the editor. And we're just gonna turn this way up, go to lumens and just pump this up. If we go down here to light function, or you can just search light function, you can see that we have the light function material. 
this is where we can actually apply those textures to our light. Now, if you see, if I take my media texture and try to drag it in here, it's not gonna let me because that actually requires a material input. It doesn't take a texture. So what we need to do is actually create a material. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna create a new material and I'm gonna call this M underscore light function. And that's gonna be our light function material. So I'm gonna double click on this. For our material domain, you're gonna set this to light function. So you're gonna get this emissive color as the only input, and that's good for what we wanna do. The first thing we can do is just drag our media texture in here, take the RGB output and just plug it right into emissive color. And there we go, we have our light function material created to a degree. So obviously you could go in here and customize this. What we can do is hold S on the keyboard and click, and it's gonna create a scalar parameter, and we can call this brightness, and then hold M and click and create a multiply node or just right click and search for a multiply node. And we can grab the brightness and put it into the B slot and then grab the RGB and put it into the A slot and then just take the output right into our emissive color. So you can see that's gonna go black and that's because our default value here is zero. So if we just set that up to one, that's gonna keep our brightness at the original level that it was when we loaded it. So we'll just save that. We can go in here and add other controls like contrast and saturation, things like that. Um, we're not gonna do that in this tutorial. So we'll right click on our light function material. We're click on create material instance. I'm gonna call it MI underscore caustics to denote what this particular material is. And then we're gonna actually drag that into our light function material. And now if we open that material instance that we created, you can see that we now have control over our brightness here. So we can bring this value up and you can see it's getting much brighter. And just keep in mind that that's not controlling the brightness of the light itself. It does appear to brighten the light and it does brighten the light, but it's actually controlling the brightness of the actual texture in our material. You're gonna see that's kind of, kind of blow things out a little bit and make it not look so good. So if you wanna increase the brightness of the actual light, I just recommend leaving this at one and then just going into the light itself and increasing the brightness here. So we'll go like 10,000 lumens. And there we go, so we can bring this up a little bit. You can also control the light color and that all works just fine. And there we go, we have control over this now and we can kind of go about creating our scene. The problem with this is it's a little bit difficult to get these media players to loop and continue looping. So if I just save this and then close out of this, you're gonna see that the media player actually stops and that's because it's not playing anymore. You also have to manually set up all of the controls for the light function material. So that's not really ideal when we're doing this over and over again. So my recommendation, if you're gonna be using this workflow is to just add it to the sequencer as a media track and then you can control exactly when it's gonna play back in your sequence. That's the hard way of doing it. You can see that it gets very complicated and takes a long time. The easy way is we have created a plugin called Lightforge 2.0. The plugin actually automates this entire process. So we're going to get rid of this spotlight, open up Lightforge 2.0. We're gonna go in here to our Gobo section, and here we can either select a spotlight or we can actually just create a new light automatically. So we're gonna hit this choose media file right here, and I'm gonna choose Calm Loop Slow 04. I'm gonna hit open and you're gonna see what that's gonna do is actually create all of the textures and the media players and the media playlists automatically and actually make sure that these textures loop in your editor every time you open Unreal Engine. So you don't have to worry about it stopping when you close the media player or anything like that. It's automatically gonna loop. So what I'm gonna do is hit add new light right here and it's gonna automatically add a light to my scene right here and you can see it's already looping. So if we go down here and just set this to like 15,000 lumens, you can see there we already have our texture set up with just like two clicks. And if we then select our spotlight here, you can see that we have our light function material already created and we can control it from here. So we can swap this out for a different one or we can just go in here and edit it. And the great thing is we've included a master material with the plugin, which actually has all of these controls set up where we can control our brightness, contrast, our UV tiling, rotation, all of that. And then we can actually even blur this. So if I reduce my contrast here, that's gonna make that a little bit less contrasty. And if I bring up my brightness just a little bit, I'm just gonna bring this up a little higher and increase the output and the attenuation radius. If we want, we could blur this so I can check blur gobo turn that on, you can see that we can create some really, really interesting looks with this blur. We also have the option to use a shadow mask, so we can enable this, and then you can choose a texture, like a black and white texture, for example, which is going to actually block 
light on the gobo. So Lightforge also comes with all of these textures as well, these static gobo textures. So we could just like grab something like this and pull it in here. And you can see that's actually going to create that light break up there for us. We could also use something like this and you can see it there. And then we can control like the strength and contrast for that texture as well. And then our, also our tiling controls. And then we can also even blur our shadow mask as well. So there's a lot you can do with this and it's going to really speed things up. But that's why I say this is the easy way of doing it. So the lighting for the scene was actually really simple. So I'm going to just get rid of the shadow mask right here and get rid of my blur. So all we did was take a spotlight up here and then we brought our outer cone angle in, bring up our inner cone angle to make that more intense. And then we just shot our light into the scene here, move it back a little bit, just really increase that intensity there. And you can see that now we're getting some nice lighting on our scene. And if we just increase the source radius a little bit, that's going to soften up those shadows. Then all we did was just duplicate that light and bring it down here, move it into the background. And then we just kind of rotated it into place here. And you can see that that is actually still, it still has our light function material applied to it. The other thing we could do is just have this spotlight selected. So just select that spotlight and then just create another gobo texture. If we wanted something totally different, we could do that. We just hit choose media file, find a different one like this one, for example, it's going to do that and then hit apply to existing light. And there we go. We have a totally different texture in our scene. And then we can go in here and control that one as well individually. So there's our shot. And we also have our translucent glass, which has been optimized with Lightforge 2.0 as well. So that's gonna look good in lit mode, but we can also switch into path tracing and then we're gonna get some really, really nice looking glass with some nice imperfections on the surface there. So that's kind of what I wanted to show you in Unreal. I highly recommend checking out the light function material controls. They are really, really cool and can give you a lot of great options in Unreal. So that's how I created these Blade Runner water caustic effects with just a few clicks. Be sure to check out the free resources below this video in the description that's going to include a free pack of gobo textures for unreal engine plus the ultimate rendering guide which is going to give you a full guide to all the best tips and tricks console commands and everything you need to get cinematic quality renders without any bugs or issues so obviously we worked a bit with lightforge 2.0 in this video if you want to learn more about some of its other features like the 30 plus lighting presets the included unreal engine LUTs and color grading suite cinematic quality render presets and its fully integrated interface designed designed specifically for filmmaking in Unreal Engine, just click the link in the description and that'll take you to a page where you can view full demos, breakdowns, and everything you need to know about the plugin. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Let me know what you want to see next, if you have any questions, and what you thought of this video. And until next time, good luck creating, and I'll see you in the next one.